Hi everyone! Today we'll be painting this lovely lady over here before she had her hair cut. We'll do so in oils. I've added uh, chapters so it's easy for you to navigate to parts that you might be more or less interested in. Feel free to drop any comment below if there's a question. And of course, like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Let's dive right in. Today we're going to paint the portrait of our dog, Luffy. And I'll just start with a slight wash in burnt umber and it's just water soluble oil paint diluted with a little bit of water just to get that uh, white color gone there and just a little bit of water and the panel I'm painting on is a very smooth panel by the brand Muspanil. I didn't give it any treatment prior to the painting session. I think this is a nice warm under color to put on there because the dog she is a bit uh, also brown colored beige more and I think this is a nice way to start it Just let's rub off some of that excess just to give it a slight stain. Just gently rubbing it in. That way it's also a bit dry before we really start to painting on top of it. Now on my reference picture I have a small grid and I always like to start with a little grid so I know where to put which lines to get the proportions right. I'm making a grid on my panel I do so every five centimeters just by placing small dots. On the edges. This will help me when uh, when sketching in those initial lines of Luffy. So we want her proportions to be right. And by just placing small dots you don't mess up when you paint paint uh, when you paint over it later on and with a grid there's more chance of uh, smearing out the colors and getting a bit more muddy colors if you for example use uh, thick lines or charcoal now with that set I think we can uh, start loosely sketching her in and I'll use a flat brush for that. And I still have here my uh, my wet burned umber. We'll use that for the initial sketch and then I'm looking on my iPad at the reference photo which I took of her where I also have a grid on. Make the dots a little bit more prominent because they should be there to help me. Paint on there. Hopefully. And I'm always looking at the intersection points of those lines. I uh, jot those down first. The 
This is actually the first time I paint a, a pet or an animal. I don't think I ever did so before. This is also for me a new uh, experience and that's always nice to try out new subjects. And she's now 13 years old. She's becoming an oldie now, but still full of life. And such a sweetheart. Focusing here also a bit on the negative spaces. So not necessarily the lines I see, but just in relationship to my grid. Often I also use my uh, my pencil to uh, get those initial sketch lines in. But as mentioned, it's good to try new things to develop yourself on a wide range of skills and styles. Because that's ultimately bringing you new options for when you're painting whatever subject it may be. Doesn't really look like a dog yet. But I believe we will get there. I think that's also the most important thing to keep in mind when you're painting. Just have some faith in the outcome, in the skills. And for those times that it really doesn't work out, then it's also fine. And that's why I think it's also very important to always paint for yourself. And to keep enjoying painting is by painting things you feel attracted to or you have a special feeling for. I think that really helps. Painting is a, a lot like sculpting uh, oftentimes. You're searching for the right lines. kind of wraps around like this. And then she has this beautiful big wet nose. The 
which is really <laughs> popping out at us. She's by no means a puppy anymore, but she does have these wonderful puppy eyes, though. You can hear her beak, her snout. Wraps around that face. And it's all a bit hanging. See if we can already rub out some highlighting parts. Might dip it in a little bit of water though. Because I use water instead of terps. like that. Titanium white, yellow ochre, uh, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue. And these two I'll probably use to mix the darkest colors, the blacks. Now let's start with just mixing some basic color for her, which would be a mixture between yellow ochre, burnt umber, and probably white. Actually this is already a quick pretty nice uh, color for the shadowy area there. I want to keep some more variations. This could be a nice color for the brighter areas. A nice creamy beige-ish We also want a little bit of blue. So let me just add a touch of that in a mixture, just to add some coolness. You're getting a kind of a, a grayish tone, as you can see. When you add blue, you get some more bluish tint. Blue-gray. Now, I have some basic colors on there now. I just want to get started painting. I'll start with this shadow color. I'm not using any medium, oil, or anything. Just putting in some shapes. Try 
trying to sculpt my way through. Following also the direction of those hairs because that saves us also time in drawing actual hairs. This is just the paint doing the job for us. We do need some more darkness, and for that I'm mixing a near black by combining these two. As you can see that's also a bit cooler because I added some uh, <coughs> more blues. Let's see, we can use it maybe here on this shadow part. Goes roughly up to there, very thinly, just scumbling it on. And let's try to keep this a bit expressive, shall we? This painting. already blocking in some color on the nose. I will go over that later on again. It's just to get the general sense of it all locked into place. And of course she also has these big droopy eyes. and a mouth that eats anything and licks <laughs> everything and she always wants to give you little kisses By just focusing on these darker shapes, it's easier to compare with my reference photo. Then you can easily jot down, or more easily jot down. Nobody ever said that painting is easy. You can easier find your way across your shapes and sizes. Just mixing it up here and there. Nothing too serious. It's all about finding those shapes and realizing that the eye needs to be bigger, for example. Shapes, angles, all that. Kind of like she's lifting an eyebrow there. So cute. You see that that underpainting already actually does quite a lot of work for us as well huh? with the undercolor, which is quite similar to her fur color.
just adding a touch of blue because around her beak or snout sorry I also see some bluish tints and I think that's interesting to enhance of course in real life it isn't this blue but it does add life to the painting that's what we want we want a lively painting of this lively girl here the shadows are not too dark because her fur is kind of reflecting and the floor is reflecting all the, the light and just following those shapes we see sculpting away And I must say it's always really fun to be sculpting like this because you see something appearing out of nothing. You know, it was just a blank canvas before and, and we're getting something that starts to look recognizable. And I think with painting it's always the trick to, uh, to also know when to stop and not overdo it. I love the effect that this uh, rather dry brush has on the painting itself. I do feel we need to get some more uh, lighter tones in now as well. So I'm just lightening up these yellows and these beiges. Seems like a pretty okay match. not detailing at all yet eh? as you can tell still about finding those shapes smaller brush and start putting on some details in the face namely the darker parts though on the eyes and the nose because those are very centered eh? and this is not black out of the tube but uh, a mixture between the ultramarine blue and burnt umber Because later on I can always add more black on top of it if I want to. If you add too much black, well, you cannot go much darker than that. But 
really do think later on I will add some uh, black to the palette though. Maybe in a later stage I will do that. The nose uh, has a very different texture, of course, than the fur. I think uh, it's nice to also see if we can achieve some of that texture work. as I might still go over it later on with black. I'm working quite thinly. Please note that I'm not painting an eye now. At least that's not what my brain is thinking. My brain is just looking at the dark shapes and not thinking about painting an eye. It's too early for that. We want to get these shapes right, proportions. And when those are right, you're already very far in your battle with your painting. Besides that, the attention should go to the play of light and shadows. She's starting to emerge bit by bit. painting any sharp blocks as you can see that it's all very light she's a furry creature and we want to enhance that feeling of furriness as well Just looking at those bigger dark spots. Also, and when you're a beginner painter, beginning painter, I also feel what really helps is to begin. Try to take a reference which has a, a quite uh, strong contrast with lights and darks. It will be much easier to determine your shapes. Now let's see. I'm still with this big brush in my hand, that's not really convenient, so I'll just drop that one and we can continue sculpting a bit here because I feel here is too much space so. and then it drop 
this down a bit. We have some loose hairs. And it goes like that a bit. There's too much space also. for a nice contrast. And then I see that this eye is not really nice yet. We can always rub out. Oh, she looks very sleepy now. Also trying to keep it a little bit softer. Let me actually already put a bit of black on my palette. Some ivory black to help us with those eyes. Because that's the darkest part. not to make it too sharp around those eyes because then they can become quite distracting in a painting
move on to those nose details as well. So the nose holes are the darkest. So the nose itself is not really a pitch black. I see browns, I see blues. I see all sorts of colors in there. Okay, I think we got a nice base down now. Let's uh, try and continue with some bigger shapes on the fur. I think this is an excellent color for putting down here. This one. It's all in the shadow. So here I make use of that other painting we've got. I'm just keeping it vague. I always like keeping things vague. I like this color. Sadly, I didn't mix enough of it. Now, can I remember how I did that? I believe we took a bit of that and we added some of this mixture to it. Get a bit that uh, grayish. That's too gray, so we're adding a bit more of that. That's close enough. Now we can mix it all together. So we have a little bit more. Well, that's uh, something that I tend to do is mix too little bit of the colors when I'm painting, eventually making it more difficult for myself to uh, to remix the same color again. But that's okay. Nicely like that. A bit curly.
making here also a bit more warmer tones and also a little bit cooler to spice things up Just a variety, basically, of um, colors which you're using to create some nice dynamics. An atmosphere. Switching to my smaller brush again. Have another look at this eye. too much focus there so I'm making a bit muted colors darker thinking in these flocks of hair.
clean tissue. And I also think we need more white. For the real highlights on the fur. And I want the main focus, of course, on the face. So this I will not be using in this bottom, even though we see they're also very light colors. Instead, I will continue using this color there. Now this I'm putting on a bit more thickly. Play with that texture. here maybe also Notice how I'm not really drawing any individual hairs, yet still you do have a bit the feeling that this is fur. Just wondering if I should do something with the background as well. And I'm thinking, using what I have on my palette here, maybe some yellow ochre, some ultramarine blue, get a nice muted green. Need some more blue. strong so let's just also add some black to that see what that does we'll mute it a bit that ivory black is always a bit of a bluish black so it will still remain slightly greenish but darker which is If I want, I can even add some white to it, see how that behaves. You get a very light green. Might work quite okay. Let's have a look later on what we want with that. First, I'll switch back to my smaller brush for some finer detailing in the face. Following the shapes of the, or the directions of the hairs.
making it slightly darker value for here for that eyebrow action It kind of looks like she has like a double eyebrow or something going on there. I don't know. It uh, can be quite brownish. Nice and warm. that here we can go a bit more closer with those darks too sharp there go up a little bit more roughly until there where the bright part takes over again is a little bit too prominent for making itself notice what I really appreciate about uh, oil paint it's uh, very forgiving if you want to change something after putting a stroke down acrylics isn't that forgiving because you only have to look at it and it's dry. So once I started with oils, I, uh, I really immediately fell in love. And uh, actually I was a bit hesitant to start with oils because I thought, oh, you have all these toxic materials materials needed uh, like to, to clean it up and such like turpentine and whatnot luckily that's not necessary to have at all at least not when you use water solvable oil paint like I do because later on also I can just clean my brushes with water and soap.
I do think we should do something with the background um, because the dog itself is basically one with the background and that would be a bit too uh, too much but for the backgrounds I'm yeah, you can also keep it nice and loose and fresh so let's see what we can do there let's see do we want to add some more white perhaps make it a bit warmer let's see what we got What I'm aiming for is a little bit of a... No. Uh, how shall we put it? Uh, a light grayish green? Something like this. it off and start again some variations perhaps huh? colors are quite close to each other if you would make the screen gray and maybe it's nice to a bit more bluish green as well side perhaps to make those lights pop even more Also, a perfect way again of re-evaluating the uh, the edges and the outlines of the work so far. So I, I believe this ear needs to be a bit more fluffy. So
it's not there yet. somewhere. Just making some variations here in the background. Keeping it playful. Also, there to show some things still of that underlaying background color. There's no shame in that whatsoever. It adds for a nice playful touch. Now let's see what we can do here to define those shapes a bit more. Here goes up a bit like that. And some bigger strokes. Following this shape of the hair.
putting on those really front facing planes which catch the most light to create some more depth to it all Making some extra loose hairs here and there. Carefully wiping my brush after every stroke, though, because it easily gets uh, dirty now. I feel here we need some more shadow work, so let's see maybe this liverish color might just do the trick. mouth and eyes and nose definitely need some more work just going over those again this time with pure black to be a bit more balance also.
not really quite right just yet. Darker colors here, and then even darker colors behind it. here in the ear a bit more prominent also so it's a dance we're doing here a dance between lights and darks and then colors you know once you starting to get the hang of painting and honestly, the only way to, to get a hang of it is by uh, doing it. It is so pleasurable. It's such a joy. Because you look in a different way at things around you. So I have a bit of the eye white. The eye white with dogs is never really white. So now I'm just basically uh, erasing the paint. necessary I gently add some more now this face really says hey I would like that snack what you're eating human can I have a bite Please.
for this nose now I'm also adding a bit of the ultramarine blue and I'm uh, kind of tapping it on there to try and get a bit of the texture and I also see some browns taking my bird umber for those for the darkest parts again I use black and then going around it a bit with the black as well to add more sense of depth smoothing it out where the actual nose holes are Find that mouth again a bit. Go with the pure black. For example, the eye. Slightly rounded. So you reflect that in the eye as well. This one also has a slight reflection. That's a bit too much now. Making it dark. 
And she has these beautiful long eyelashes. It's really her signature. Make that eye white a little bit more, just a touch. This bluish color you can also do some nice things with the nose, just putting some. Dots to indicate that shiny, wet nose. Without overdoing it. Not quite pleased with the nose just yet.
think we are getting somewhere though. some more brown in the mixture. I'm just using a dry brush to erase paint again. Just adding a few hairs here and there which pinch out just a few the focal point of course Adding some more fur color here, that it's not all darkness there, but rather a lush fur. I'm not going to put her color on. I don't uh, think that's really nice.
or should I? I think not. I think it's nice like this. Maybe here blend the background a bit with the fur. And then see what we need to do about that part. Just a bit of a muted color with a little bit of the purple color in there. Sort of a reflection of the environment and not having it too distracting. Then we do need to make this ridge a bit more prominent. Like that. I do think her uh, eye, the reflection, can be a bit more bright. I'm actually going to use my palette knife for that. Put on a little dab. But it needs to be a very little dab, so I first need to create just the tiniest bit. There in a second one. Oh, if you cannot resist those eyes, huh? She has these eyebrows, right? These eyelashes. Just scratch out the paint. For the parts where we don't want them to be too dominant, just smoothening it out. Take a step back with some distance. fresh look at it and then I feel that we can still put some more light here to accentuate that fur also and on our ear Playing around with that brush a bit. Make 
photodynamics. Without overdoing it. It's also still quite uh, dominant. Maybe we can scratch out a little bit. Just break it a bit. I'm going over with the brush without paint. Just went through my eyelash there.
there. And I think this is as far as I'm going to take it because otherwise you risk of losing that painterly touch. So all that's left now is to sign it. And I've got a little toothpick here with which I will scratch my signature in the still wet paint. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Of course, a like and a subscribe will be highly appreciated. They motivate me to make extra videos like this. Happy painting.